Most people, when they're about to give their first lecture, suffer nerves. I know I did. The very first time I gave a lecture, I threw up before I went and gave the lecture. I went and gave the lecture, and then I threw up again. And that, notwithstanding the fact that I've been teaching in schools for years, and that actually I felt reasonably confident in my material. And that's because the very first time you do it can be quite daunting. And I think what I'd like to share with you now is some of the tips of the trade that might help you through that first uncomfortable experience. So first of all, obviously people need to be prepared, but the thing that many people do wrong on their first lecture is that they over-prepare and they try and write down masses and masses of stuff and they try and have masses and masses of PowerPoint slides and then they find they don't get through the material on time. I would say it's a really good idea to think about having some elements within their lecture that I call plasticine and elastic. Let's start with elastic. Elastic is something that you've prepared in advance and if the time is going well you've got time to say plenty and if you're running short you can actually say it fairly quickly. Plasticine, modelling clay, play-doh, whatever you like to call it. Play-doh is something you have in mind that if your timing is going wrong, you can actually ask the students to do something that will keep them busy until you find your place in the slides or until you think about what you're going to say next. And, of course, nobody would ever want to talk solidly for 50 minutes without actually getting the students to do some things anyway because they have to learn by doing. So you will have some activities built in. I would imagine there will be things like, just among yourselves, talk for two minutes about the concept we've just discussed. Or jot down on a piece of paper and prepare to give it in a question that you'd like to ask about what we've been doing. And they can pass those in if you like. That's a bit boring. They can screw them up and throw them as paper balls to you. They can make paper aeroplanes. Whatever you feel comfortable with. And then you pick some of those up, you read out the question and answer it. Anything that's going to take the pressure off you for a little while and not make you feel you have to be the rabbit in the headlights for the whole of the 50 minutes. So we're trying to vary the activities. We might give them, for example, just for 30 seconds, think about a troubling aspect of this or how you're going to answer this question or what this equation actually means or how this compares with your experience to date. 30 seconds is a long time in a lecture theatre where there's silence, but actually it gives students to catch their breath and make it clear to the students, especially if they're new like you, they don't have to write down every word. You will have done your preparation, whether it's in the form of notes or PowerPoint slides or a script. Actually, I'd advise against a full script because then you'll just stand and read it to them. But be aware that the students are unlikely to get everything you say in your very first presentation of it. So ideally, make all those materials available to them on the course website, and they can look at that afterwards. So the answer, I think, is preparation, engagement, plasticine, elastic, ensuring students are doing things at various points, and never letting it get you flustered. Don't worry if you have to miss a few bits out. Unless you tell them right at the beginning, they won't know everything you're going to include. And after the first one's out of the way, I think you will have a tremendous sense of satisfaction of a mounted that seemed to be terribly hard to climb actually having been achieved within your own capabilities.